Welcome to the ENME 351 video lecture series. This is part one of a two-part installment in which we'll explore sampling and aliasing. This lesson focuses on sampling. Previously, we explored this concept of going from a analog or a continuous signal to a digital or discrete signal. And that process involved this concept of sampling. And in sampling, we take this continuous signal in both time and amplitude, and we sample that signal in discrete chunks, in discrete quanta in terms of time. So our blue dots here might be our sampled signal from our continuous analog signal. There are important definitions to be aware of when evaluating this sampled signal. You may recall the distance between the samples in terms of the time. We refer to that as delta t. And delta t is our sampling time. And sometimes you'll see this written as lowercase delta t, and sometimes you'll see this in the more traditional uppercase delta t. But delta t, the time between samples, is our sampling time. Now, what we're going to focus on in terms of the concept of sampling is one over the sampling time. This is known as the sampling frequency. And the driving question then is, how fast do I need to sample this signal in order to accurately reconstruct the original signal? Let's explore a few case studies then to evaluate the consequences of this sampling frequency. Here I have a sine wave at a 10 hertz frequency, and each division between my sampled signal along the time axis will be 10 milliseconds long. So if I start sampling my 10 hertz signal at this 100 hertz frequency, I'll find my sampled signal is now represented by these red dots. So to evaluate what this sampled signal is telling us in terms of information, we're going to reconstruct the signal using this 100 hertz sampled signal. And we're going to use a linear interpolation between these samples. And this is effectively drawing a straight line between these red sampled points. If I remove my 10 hertz sine wave then, we see the sampled signal using the 100 hertz sampling frequency and linear interpolation to reconstruct my signal. So if we take a look at this reconstructed signal at this sampling frequency, we're still getting a pretty good approximation, let's say, of the original 10 hertz sine wave. But now let's slow things down a bit. Now let's sample at 27 hertz. As a consequence, this will increase my sampling interval from 10 milliseconds up to 37 milliseconds. At this new sampling frequency, my sampled signal is now represented by these green dots where the distance along the time axis is 37 milliseconds between samples. And again, we can use the linear interpolation to connect the dots, so to speak. And if we remove our 10 hertz sine wave from our plot, we see then our interpretation, our sampled signal, sampling at a frequency of 27 hertz. And I think you'll agree, we're still getting, let's say, most of the representation of the original 10 hertz signal. Although, I think you'll also agree this sampled signal at 27 hertz is not nearly as good. It's not telling us nearly as much information as our signal that was sampled at 100 hertz. But the representation is still quite good. I'm getting a peak or a valley corresponding roughly to the original 10 hertz sine wave. Now let's slow things down even further. Let's go from 100 hertz down to 27, now down to 12 hertz sampling frequency. This corresponds to a sampling interval of 83 milliseconds. At this sampling frequency, my sampled signal is now represented by these yellow dots, where the time interval along the time axis is 83 milliseconds between samples. And my reconstructed signal, again using linear interpolation, now looks like this, where this sampled signal now looks nothing like the 10 hertz sine wave, and in fact, it looks more like a 2 hertz signal. This is ultimately a consequence of slowing down our sampling frequency from 100 hertz down to 27 down to 12 hertz. We're now seeing what appears to be a 2 hertz reconstructed sine wave, even though our original signal is a 10 hertz sine wave. Let's explore how to avoid this sampling phenomena. The Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem says that to accurately reconstruct a sampled signal, the sampling rate, or FS, must be greater than two times twice the highest frequency in the signal. Another way to write this or to say this is to write FS must be greater than two times FM, where FS is my sampling rate and FM is the highest or maximum frequency in my signal. 
We could also write this as delta t, my sampling interval, must be less than 1 over quantity 2 times fm. So if I follow these rules from the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem, I should be able to accurately reconstruct my signal. If I go back then, I have a 10 hertz sine wave here. So I must sample at a minimum of 20 hertz to accurately reconstruct my signal. And we see that with 27 hertz, I'm just above that 20 hertz threshold. I am able to reconstruct the signal. And as I go down below that 20 hertz number, down here to 12 hertz, I see I'm unable to accurately reconstruct that signal. So according to the Nyquist-Shannon sampling theorem, I have to sample at greater than twice the maximum frequency in my signal to accurately reconstruct that sampled signal.